Mr. Venue. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I want to briefly address an issue that's been raised in the context of uh, the vote we'll have later today. Uh, as you know, Mr. President, uh, later today we'll be using the Congressional Review Act to repeal a very ill-conceived regulation imposed by the CFPB. Now, some of our colleagues and some uh, outside this chamber have suggested that it's somehow problematic to use the Congressional Review Act, to use this device for the repeal of a regulation that's promulgated by guidance as opposed to those regulations promulgated in accordance with the Administrative Procedures Act that we usually refer to as a rule or a rulemaking. The reality is that the applicability of the Congressional Review Act to a guidance, in my view, is very obvious and very well established and should not be controversial. I understand people might like the CFPB's rule, which I don't, but to suggest that somehow because they issued it through a guidance rather than through the appropriate rulemaking process that we somehow shouldn't be using the Congressional Review Act, I think is completely mistaken. First of all, there's the CRA's definition of a rule. It's very broad and intentionally so. I will quote in part that definition. It says, the whole or a part of an agency statement of general or particular applicability. The text says nothing about limiting the Congressional Review Act procedural device to formal rulemakings that followed from the Administrative Procedures Act. It's much broader than that. Instead, it says whole or part of an agency statement. Uh, but you don't have to just take my word for this. You could go back to the statements of the authors of the Congressional Review Act itself, the legislation that makes this vote today possible. And one of the authors was none other than Harry Reid, the former Senate Majority Leader and Senate Minority Leader. And Senator Reid uh, was very clear about the intention. Uh, he and Senator Nichols at the time and Senator Stevens put out a joint statement, in which I, and I will quote this. It's brief, but it's important. It says, the authors are concerned that some agencies have attempted to circumvent notice and comment requirements by trying to give legal effect to general statements of policy, guidelines, and agency policy and procedural manners. The authors admonish the agencies that the Administrative Procedures Act's broad definition of rule was adopted by the authors of this legislation, the CRA, to discourage circumvention of the requirements of the chapter. So it, here's, here's the irony uh, implied by the position of those who suggest we can't use the Congressional Review Act to repeal a guidance. What, what they really are suggesting is that the regula regulators and the agencies ought to be able to circumvent the very public process that's established in law, the Administrative Procedures Act, for a rulemaking. They ought to be able to avoid the, the need to collaborate with other regulators, to issue a proposed rule to the public for a, an extensive comment period, to make it subject to scrutiny, all of the things that we demand of a proper rulemaking so that we end up with a better rule, right? One that has been vetted one that has been fully considered. Well, what you're saying is if the CRA is not applicable when, it's, when this is done by a guidance, you create an incentive for the agency to circumvent this very public scrutiny so that they can impose their will directly without it. That would clearly be a terrible outcome. Um, so it, fortunately, the authors of this legislation wrote it precisely so that it could apply to a guidance, and they made it clear that that was the outcome that they wanted. Um, it doesn't end there, though. There have been more than a dozen instances already when members of the Senate have asked the GAO to review guidance to determine whether that guidance rises to the level of importance and has the nature of a rulemaking so that it would be subject to the Congressional Review Act. As a matter of fact, within a single year of the passage of the Congressional Review Act, Congress asked GAO to review a guidance for this purpose. So this has been done many times. And in fact, it is our Democratic colleagues that set the precedent for attempting to overturn a guidance <clears throat> after the traditional CRA time window had expired 
uh, because the guidance uh, was not in the nature of a formal rulemaking. In 2008, there was an effort by Senators Rockefeller and Baucus to overturn a CHIP guidance and to use the Congressional Review Act to do it, exactly as we are today going to use the Congressional Review Act to overturn a different guidance. That effort by Senators Rockefeller and Baucus had 41 co-sponsors, including then-Senators Obama, Biden, Clinton, Schumer, Durbin, Brown, and many other Democratic senators who are still serving today. Senator Baucus, a Democrat, laid out the case, and I quote, he said, one agency attempted to ignore its obligations and circumvent the process established by the CRA, and the agency should not be rewarded. I couldn't agree more. He's exactly right. More from Senator Baucus, and I quote, this resolution is a way for Congress to send the message that it expects agencies to comply with the law. Congress should stand up for itself and disapprove of this rule because it was not promulgated properly. This makes perfect sense, right? To be able to overturn a guidance that has the force of a rule, which is to say, really, let's be honest, the force of law, um, was always contemplated as part of the CRA and our Democratic colleagues attempted to use it for that very purpose. And to do anything else would be absolutely to encourage the agencies to sneak around the Administrative Procedures Act, to avoid the public scrutiny and disclosure requirements, and promulgate rules through guidance routinely. There's another more fundamental issue here, Mr. President, that I think we should be acknowledging. And that is that the use of the Congressional Review Act is a really important, a modest but important step in the direction of restoring accountability to Congress. As a, the presiding officer understands very well, the Constitution is completely unambiguous, it's very clear. Legislative authority is vested in Congress. It's supposed to be our responsibility to write the laws. But we delegate a huge amount of authority and power to the executive branch. We say, well, you write these rules. Maybe it's, it's too complicated, or maybe, maybe we don't want to be held accountable for the outcome. It happens all the time. There's been a huge shift <clears throat> whereby the, the permanent bureaucracy, the administration, has enormous amount of power to effectively write laws. We call them rules, sometimes guidance, but they have the power of law, they have the force of law, they are not optional, they are imposed on whatever industry or individual is subject to them. And this is, a, 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 at a minimum, I think Congress ought to be reviewing this. This is a mechanism for holding Congress accountable for the rules that we tolerate the agencies to promulgate. I think it is a really important step in that direction. So again, to summarize, Mr. President, the use of the Congressional Review Act to repeal a guidance is well established. It is consistent with any plain reading of the law. It is consistent with the intent of the authors at the time. Congress has attempted to do so in the past. Democrats have attempted to do it. And it is an important, modest but important step in restoring the accountability of Congress with respect to the regulations that we encourage the executive branch to promulgate. Um, there's no evidence that uh, this somehow opens a floodgate of uh, repeal, as some have suggested, but any guidance, in fact, any rulemaking, I think ultimately should be um, subject to congressional review because after all, it's our authority in the first place that uh, is used to generate it. So, uh, I am pleased that we were able to pass a motion to proceed yesterday. My understanding is we'll be voting sometime around noon or so on this, and I urge my colleagues to vote in favor of repealing this ill-conceived regulation and restoring some modicum of congressional accountability to the rulemaking process. And I yield the floor.